right, you guys. Today's First Impression Friday is for Fiber Moods, most recent edition. I'm a couple weeks late on this one. I know it's been out for a while. A lot of you have probably already seen it, but maybe you haven't seen it through the Inside the Hem lens yet. Um, the magazine has says it has 12 sewing patterns, um, 12 sewing patterns, and then each one has a couple versions maybe. Um, and then two children's patterns, and there's going to be an Instagram Live for the Mabel top, which we will look at here in a little bit. It's like a, I don't know if it's a sew along or if it's just like a community, like let's just sew the Mabel top together. I'm not entirely sure on that, but either way, here is an overview of all the patterns that they have in this um, new collection. And we'll start taking a look at them. So this very first one is called the Alix Skirt. I'm assuming that's Alix. I read a book. Well, I listened to a book where the character's name was Alix, and it was spelled this way. And then my friend has a boss whose name is Alix, and it's spelled this way. So I'm going to go with Alix. <laughs> um, it is described as a comfy button-down skirt. Alix has got it all subtle pleating with a waistband with sturdy belt loops. You, chair, you choose whether to pair it with a belt or not. Convenient hidden side seam pockets and a wide top stitched hem. We made ours mid-length, but making a leak shorter or longer is a breeze to do. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at some of these pictures. I have always adored their photo shoots. They're just always so, I don't know, like artsy. I love it. So it is a button front. I don't know that they said that. Um, button front. Here's the deep waistband that they mention. Um, and then she's got the belt on, but you can't really see. It does seem awfully wide. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot of, that's a lot of width in the hem, I think. Super cute fabric. And I think they do tell you about, ooh, about, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know what was going on. Okay. <laughs> I guess my mouse pad's a little bit more sensitive than I realized. Okay. Uh, I think they do tell you about the fabrics, like where they got them and stuff. So we'll take a look at that. I do love it with a little sweatshirt and sneakers. Super cute. Here it is in another version. So I don't know. They say subtle pleats. These feel like humongous pleats to me. And that is what is giving it so much volume. But it does seem really well constructed. I'm seeing like, you know, some really nice facings in here. And again, that super deep hem. All right. Those are all the photos that we get. Um, okay. Fabric advice. Lends itself well to all kinds of fabrics from poplin, twill, chambray, corduroy, tencel, crepe. Yeah. I mean, anything woven almost. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially if you choose shorter lengths, um, you could really go with a more structured fabric for sure. Um, then there's a little video. All right, so you'll need some thread, interfacing, some buttons, and then fabric requirements are here. That's a lot for a skirt, right? That's a, this is a very, very wide skirt. Um, and then here is where they talk about their fabric and some styling advice, which I think is just so cute. Um, yeah, so this must be the one they used maybe either way you can get, um, a bunch of different fabrics from, not from them, right? This is going to go somewhere else. Where can you buy this? And I'm not sure if it's in the U.S. Yeah, these are all going to be Belgian. Um, but either way, you can learn a lot about the fabric um, and then find something similar um, in the U.S. So if you can figure out what this means, I think it's 90% cotton, 4% elastane, maybe. Um, I don't know what the EA stands for. Maybe um, someone can reach out to them and ask them to do a um, like a chart that says what seat, what each of these stand for. So that would be a lot easier. Um, anyway, so there's that and they'll have this for every single pattern. I'm not going to show you all of them, but, um, we'll go through it now. And then the style advice for the Alix, um, 
Your body shape is characterized by a lower body that's fuller than the torso. This is uh, for A types. I don't know what an A type is. You look lovely in an A-line skirt that drapes gently over your hips. Vertical lines created by the blah, blah, blah. Pair of leaks with, you know, these tops. And then draw attention to the your upper body. Um, so just all about proportions. And then... If you have, you know, a super curvy figure, you can you should make it a drapier fabric so that the fabric kind of, you know, falls closer to the body and doesn't make you look wider on the bottom than you really are. And then you go into all the different types, H types. Um, and I think that that is what would be, what do they call it? Like a square rectangle, kind of like an athletic build maybe. Um, oh no, that would be... I don't know. I don't know all these letters and then the fruit and then the, th I don't know all the things, but you can find your um, body type in this little post and then it'll give you lots of ideas about how to style it and, you know, proportions and things to look out for, fabrics you should make it in, yada, yada, yada. It's a really great resource for every pattern. Okay, so that is... A leaks and I don't know um, I'd have to download the instructions in order for us to see the size chart so we're not going to do that for every single one because I just can't download <laughs> all the patterns but you get an idea all right that's a leaks pretty simple little skirt next up we have the Babette these are some pants. Have you ever had to tearfully part with your favorite pair of jeans because they were threadbare? Meet Babette, the new apple of your eye. A pair of high-waisted trousers with wide legs. Super on trend right now. All the pockets and a zip fly. Never sewn a zip fly, no problem. We show you how. Wear these jeans ankle length or even floor length to boost their retro feel. We'll show you an easy way to alter the length. All right. So here they are, kind of close up. Yeah, 1,000%, just regular old jeans. Um, they do have a really pretty leg line. There they are, kind of like in action. That must be like a lighter weight fabric. I mean... It is a little bit hard to see, you know, the what we want to see in these little stylized pictures, but they are still cute. I, I do notice a lot of, like, odd wrinkling. Like, up here, this is odd. This is borderline. There's such a delicate balance between, you know, having a crotch curve that gives you two separate butt cheeks so you don't have, like, a mono butt, um, but then also one that's just, like, a straight-up wedgie. Such a delicate balance, and I think this is this is close to tipping the scale. Here's a really great photo. Yeah, the leg line is really great. I love that. They still haven't showed us anything of the waistband. Not really, anyway. They do have the top stitching. Um, it's just such a light color on this light denim. All right, that's it for photos. Your best bet for Babette is a stretch or no stretch cotton twill. They will also look divine in corduroy or faux leather. Um, they gave it a three-star difficulty. Thread interfacing, jeans, buttons, rivets, lightweight cotton, for like a, I mean, probably for the pocket bag, closed end zip and fabric. You know what's something else that they don't really show is line drawings. What's down here? Are these all people who have made the Babette already? My goodness. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, let's see what this does. Uh, just real quick 10 second video on 
the Babette. They don't even really show them up close or anything. All right. So, yep, that is Babette. You could take your favorite gingers or whatever other kind of jeans patterns you have and create this leg line. So don't buy these just for that. But if you have yet to find a pair of high-waisted jeans that you like, um, this could be a good one. All right, next we've got, let's go here to the Paulette blouse. I see some ruffles. <laughs> My best Oprah voice. Paulette is dripping with romance and elegance. Pair it with a skirt or jeans and you've got a stylish outfit for the spring. The blouse is fitted, cut, has princess themes with ruffles on both sides of the bodice front, extending over the shoulders and around the back. Paulette has an elegant standing collar and a proper shirt cuff. So this is what they mean by all that. All that to say. All right, so here's your princess seam. Then they've got this, it's not even a flounce. I think it's more of a ruffle which, oh, I don't know. I'm starting to get really picky about my flounces and my ruffles, I guess. But, um, and the, dif the difference is a flounce is cut like in a circle shape. And then when you apply it to the garment, it is sewn in smooth. There aren't any gathers, um, but it still creates this little really beautiful ruffle effect. A ruffle is gathered at the top and that is what is sewn into the seam. Either way, though, it is a really cute detail. Love it in the stripe. Got The button down is great. The fit of it, pretty slim, although it is a little bit hard to tell with this sweater. But um, And then this is the stand collar that they mentioned. And then the proper shirt cuff. This feels like very J. Crew to me. Um, this is someone with it all buttoned up, which is a little bit more of like an edgy look. This is really pretty. This, this to me can sometimes look a little um, like space alien, space cadet, space, you know. Um, but I guess this fabric and the way that it is, the princess seems extend so far out on the shoulder. I mean, this is basically uh, where a sleeve would be inset. You know what I mean? So that, w that way it's not sticking out, I guess, is my point. Oh, let's see more of the back. I see it kind of comes around. Let's see more of that. More of the back. No more of the back. Well, that's unfortunate. Because that seems like a really cool detail. It's like into a yoke. This is really cute. I like this a lot. Paulette looks lovely in fabrics with fluid drape as well as structured fabrics. The ruffles will drape gracefully around the shoulders in a fabric with fluid drape, such as rayon. As a result, there won't be too much volume around the shoulders. A structured fabric would give it more of a winged effect, i.e. extra volume. No single fabric is perfect for Paulette. Our corduroy and eyelet lace. Wait, our recommendations. Chambray, I skipped a line. Chambray, tinsel, poplin, rayon baby rib corduroy and eyelet lace there's no limit all right they're giving this three stars yeah probably for the collar and the you know the band the button band thread interfacing buttons and then here are your fabric requirements uh-oh rectification let's see what this is There is an error in the dimensions of the sleeve binding. This does not apply to the PDF. The correct dimension should be. Oh. That's interesting. Oh, here's, no, I thought those are different, more pictures. Are there more pictures? There are more, but still, wait, we're just revolving. Okay. Um. All right, so pay attention to that, I guess, if you're using the magazine version. Otherwise, let's see if the video, 17 seconds, let's see if it shows the back. Nope, I don't know why they're not showing the back. That is such a missed opportunity. But there you have it. That is Paulette Love. All right, now we've got the Tulia jumpsuit. Did this say one star? 
Mm. Still three stars difficulty. All right. Before you go off and say, this is ridiculous, just know that these flight suit type of jumpsuits are very on trend for spring. Like, they're in Target. And you know if it's made it to Target, then <laughs> it is a widespread, wide appeal trend. It looks good on all body types. And you make them out of like these sort of uh, bottom weight fabrics. So lots and lots of structure. So before you just, just reserve your comments until I'm done. <laughs> Maybe I will be able to convince you. Okay. Tulia's lapeled v-neck and roomy ankle length trousers take you all the way back to the 80s. The pleats that run from front to back the pleats that run from front to back show off your shoulders. So these go up and over. Um, the top has set in sleeves and the button waistband is there to emphasize your waistline. Tulia also features an elasticized waistband at the back, handy side pockets, pleats, and a zip. Okay, let's check her out. So... What they're saying is, and it's just really hard to see, but these little doodads here go up and over. Hopefully they'll show us some of the back. But look at this amazing lapeled collar. I mean, that is a exaggerated notch, exaggerated lapel. I mean, this one might be a little more, you know, 80s inspired than some of the others I've seen. But nonetheless... Still really, like, on trend. And I think that this opens up and then you have a zip fly here and that's how you get in and out of them. Um, she's also got a little tank on underneath. So for those of you that are like, I don't like getting naked, blah, 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 blah. You are still dressed underneath. All right, here's some really good pictures of this bodice. So, yeah, theirs is a little bit more, yeah, for sure 80s, for sure, like, you know, um, what with Star Trek. Um, they aren't all like this. This one, I will, okay, honestly, I'm convincing myself that I don't like it, even though I thought I was going to convince you guys that I would like it. This one's not my favorite that I've seen. But there are some really, really, really great ones out there. But, I mean, come on. Does she not look like the coolest? Like, if you can pull it off, it's bomb. I just don't know how many of us, like, suburban, <laughs> you know, like, regular people. You have to have, like, she has major attitude. Um, you cannot be a demure person and walk out the door in something like this. She just looks like a million bucks. But, okay, so here are the pleats again. It's a really, really cool detail. It is really, really cool. And then the um, lapel collar, you know, folds over in the back. This looks like to be a beautifully drafted collar. Um, how it's like, uh, the way the curves are sewn, you know, cause it to kind of hug the shoulder, which is how it should be. And then here's the elasticated waist. A little bit of something here, but obviously they made one sample size and both girls are wearing it. So I give them a little bit of a, a little bit of a pass on that. But yeah, I mean, does this not look like Star Trek to you? Make Tulia in a fairly structured fabric with enough body. We went with a cotton twill with a teensy bit of stretch that was easy to work with. Poplin, denim, and corduroy will also be great. We don't recommend fabrics with overly fluid drape or that are too lightweight. Okay, yeah, and then there's thread and interfacing, but there's a zipper and then a button. And elastic is one and a quarter to one and three fifths of an inch um, wide. So pretty wide elastic. Um, and then here are your fabric requirements. And that's just because they're converting from metric to imperial it's cool though it's very 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 trendy this almost feels like a bird of style pattern to me but super cool and obviously a dress up dress down situation too which is nice
So yeah, if you've got the balls, can I say that on here? <laughs> if you've got the guts, if you've got the guts to wear it, go for it. All right, we've got the Molly jacket, a reversible coat like the Molly made in a quilted or padded fabric. It's an item your wardrobe simply can't do without. Molly can be closed with practical snaps, has patch pockets, and the seams have bias tape finish. Would you rather make this loose cut? Would you rather make this loose cut two-in-one garment a simple single layer coat? Go for it. Okay, that was worded very confusing. So this is not part of the coat. The This is her top underneath. This is the coat. Very much a Tamarack knockoff. Not a knockoff, but, you know, inspired by. Um, this one is not quilted or anything. But, yeah, you've really just got a front piece. You've got your back piece sewn in on, along the shoulder here. Drop shoulder. Um, and then you've got your sleeves and that's it. You bind them all together, all your raw edges, you bind them together with bias binding. Really, really easy to put together. Here's one made in a quilted fabric. Hard to tell if they're having you quilt your own fabric or you're buying pre-quilted fabric to do it. Hard to tell, but there's the um, patch pocket. It is pretty long and pretty oversized. The stripe one's really cute, especially how they have it styled. And because, you know, you've got it quilted, it's going to be very structured no matter what fabric you start with. So no pictures of the back again. I wish I could see her standing up in more of like a straight on kind of photo, but that's sort of give and take you get with having pretty pictures, right? Maybe this will show some people straight on. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Okay, go away. All right, here it is straight on. So, yeah, just a boxy. I want to say this is like a low hip length, um, no collar, and a curved front hem. It is pretty straightforward. I can't tell whether I like it or not. I'm thinking probably not. I'm thinking like, it, uh, it's not that I don't like it. It's just not that special. Like, I don't think I'll remember this as I'm going to bed tonight. Whereas with that, that uh, button down shirt, I absolutely will. Know what I'm saying? Uh, thread, snaps, bias tape. I'm sure you need a ton of it. Um, fabric. For the outside, fabric for the inside. It is kind of cool that it's reversible, but it's not reversible with snaps because then the snaps wouldn't work, would they? Your snaps would be backwards. Um, so that's something to consider. You absolutely don't need to have snaps. You could just have like an open front coat. Um, but yeah, that boxy sort of design is... A little bit tough to wear, especially in such a structured fabric. It says you can't go wrong with knits or wovens for Molly. Take your pick from cotton twill, wool blends, or a padded quilted fabric. Okay, which I'm assuming means pre-quilted. Okay, now we've got the mini top. Oh, that's kids. So we'll just take a, a quick gander at her and say, oh, she's so cute. It is a really cute top. <laughs> um, but I don't review kids' clothes because I don't make kids' clothes. So I don't really know how to assess them for fit or any of that stuff. So we'll move on from the kids. We've gone into Mabel now. Now Mabel is the one that I think is like the adult version of that one we just saw. Um, it's also the one that they're doing their Instagram for. So if you want to make this... Um, you can do it with the community on Instagram. Super, super cute. I just made a top that had pleats at the cuff and I am obsessed with it. This to me is like the new t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Um, this one might be a little bit thicker of a fabric, maybe sweatshirting, but I think, I think the juxtaposition of a sweatshirt with these feminine details is 
you just cannot go wrong. It's just so, 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 so cute. So cute. Love this. Okay. A top can make or break your outfit, which is why we're fans of this simple top with a round neckline, three quarter length puffed sleeves, the neck binding, hem band, and wrist trim all have rib trim fabric finish. The sleeve link up to you. We'll show you the best way to alter that here. Fancy and extra hint of decadence. Just stitch a ruffle down the front. Yeah, all down the center front. That's a little fussy to me. But so they were able to get a rib knit that's the exact same color as their sweatshirting, which is a little bit difficult to do here in the States. Um, so you could just use your sweatshirt fa uh, fabric again or find a sweatshirt fabric that's in like a basic color, like black, white, you know, gray. Um, and then you should be able to find some matching ribbing that way. Cute. Okay, let's look at the pictures. So, ruffle, or I'm sorry, gathered sleeve cap, gathered armhole into the cuff, super high neck. I mean, this neckband is like going up onto her neck. So, just really, really high neckband. And then you've got the waistband. It's really simple, but it just makes such an impact with all these gathers. Here it is with the ruffle down the front. Honestly, better than I thought it was going to look. And because they're using sweatshirting or whatever this is, they just left this raw. Super easy to do. You just take like, I don't know, two inches of fabric and just do a gathering stitch down the center, gather it up, and then top stitch it on. It's really easy to do. This is an interesting idea for styling where you have your turtleneck kind of peeking out. I like it out coming out the bottom like this a lot. So good layering piece. And you really get an idea of how voluminous the, the sleeves really are. I think in that other picture, the first one, they didn't look this big, but they definitely are. I also have a concern about where this is hitting on her shoulder. This looks really narrow, this shoulder. I almost feel like it needs to come out to here. So that might be something to check on your own pattern. But then again, it's also, oh, shoot. It's also hard to tell because the, um, because the, I mean, is this her shoulder in here or is that just the, the volume of the fabric sticking out beyond her shoulder? Do you know what I mean? Like it's hard to tell where her actual body is in here because if this is her shoulder for real, then yeah, this is way too far in. But if this is just volume and her shoulder is, you know, out here somewhere, then it's fine. So just check it on yours, you know. This is a really great fabric. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe some kind of like, I don't know, like a sweater knit. This feels very Ann Taylor to me. And, you know, they charge like 88 bucks for it or something. Cute. Uh, make Mabel in a knit. Take your pick from French Terry, knit jacquard, sweatshirt fabric, glitter jersey. Maybe that's what that was. Glitter jersey. And then here's where you can watch the social sew along. One star. Yeah, super easy to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be getting this one for sure. Thread. Trim fabric. But what they mean by that is the rib knit. And then here's your fabric requirements. I mean, two, two and a half yards, but you do have all that volume. You know what I mean? It might also be cute if you left off the waistband and then lengthened it into like a sweatshirt dress. That could be pretty cute. And you wouldn't need that much more fabric to do that. Love Mabel. Mabel feels like the mini. Right? It is the adult version of the mini. Right? Those are the same thing. Yeah. So there you go. There's your review on mini as well. <laughs> okay. Robin pullover. Look at this cutie. We're going to skip him though. And go to the Marion dress. So, Marion. The dress of my dreams. Mix a dash of boho with sturdy dose of romantic and a splash of western. And what do you get? An on-trend prairie dress. Okay, I have to 
you know, have a little interlude here. Have you guys seen the um, TikTok trend with the um, Target dresses? Apparently Target released this collection of dresses and women are buying them and taking pictures um, alluding to like, uh, oh, I'm doing such a bad job sharing this, uh, alluding to like, uh, I don't want to say polygamy, that's not right, but you know, where you're like in a cult, like cult fashion, that's what it is. Um, and they're doing all these really funny things. There's uh, couples who have like where the guy wears the dress and the girl wears the dress and they do that American Gothic thing with the pitchfork and everybody's just doing all of these really like crazy pictures with these Target dresses because they just look so like like way too prairie, I guess is the, is the point. But it's just so interesting how like, you know, one person saw that started this trend and now all these people are doing it. So interesting. Check it out. Okay. Um, this one is a lot cuter than what the Target is putting out. I think the reason why Target's look extra prairie is because of the fabric choice and they're doing like muted tones. I think it's out of cotton fabric, you know, all that kind of thing. There's a uh, lace trim and it is just very prairie. Um, Okay, so Marion features raglan sleeves, a jewel neck, a tiered skirt, elasticized wrists and waist, and a tie for the waistline. Tighten it or wear it comfortably loose. Not fond of the ruffles at the wrist? The solution is simple. Just leave off the ruffle strips and finish the sleeve with a double fold hem. For a nifty alternative, you can turn Marion into a top in no time by leaving off the bottom tier of the skirt. Yes. Okay, so let's take a look. So it looks like a neck binding, raglan sleeve, like they mentioned, which is such an interesting choice for a floaty dress. You don't see that very often. And raglan sleeves are like a million times easier to sew than any set-in sleeve you've ever tried. You've got your elasticized waist that also has a drawstring in it. And then we've got tiers. We've got one tier, I think, one long tier. And that's what they mean about leaving this off and you have kind of like a peplum top. You can, you know, take the elastic out of here. You can loosen this and have it be a little bit more flowy. Really pretty. Oh. <laughs> this is out of eyelet, which is amazing because look where they underlined it. Only the bodice and this first tier plus I don't know six or eight inches so this is this would be inappropriate for her to wear without the eyelet on top do you know what I mean like this underlining part isn't that long but because you've got the overlay um it's kind of like an illusion and of course all this whole raglan being uh like eyelet and see-through unlined um it's also really really pretty so that's a great idea for some eyelet. All right, now we've got a version in maybe like a gauze. Sorry, her nipples were really distracting to me. I couldn't tell what those were, but I guess, I don't know. Anyways, I'm sorry for drawing your attention to that. That's just where my mind went. Okay, um, so yeah, solid color. This is just the same as the first version that we saw. I'm very uh, leery of this neckline though. I don't know how easy that will be to pull off. Here is a keyhole neckline that you have to get it, you know, get into it. And that's it for pictures. Okay. When it comes to selecting fabric for Marion, you have choices galore. Fabrics include tinsel, poplin, chambray, linen, a padded fabric. I don't know what that means. Does that mean like bubble crepe or something? Um, viscose, which is rayon crepe, muslin, eyelet lace. Yeah, I think any, any woven lightweight all the way up to something even a little bit more stable, like the green version. Two stars of difficulty, which I think even that is a stretch. Uh, it, sh it is easier. I was going to say it should be one star, but I don't know how what their rating is based on. But two, it's probably like a one and a half star. <laughs> Thread, iron-on interfacing, a hook and eye for the little keyhole, fabric, and elastic. 
itty bitty elastic, quarter inch or a little bit more. Um, yeah, and then here's your fabric requirements. Yeah, there's just really long, you know, the dress is really long. Plus, when you do a raglan sleeve, it does take up more fabric because, you know, the raglan is taller. All right. Cutie Patootie Marion. This is Roseanne. Roseanne? Like the TV show? Rosen. Rosen. I don't know. One of those. <laughs> this graceful romantic top is destined to have you daydreaming about sunshine and summertime. The elegance is all in the details. The V-neck set in sleeves with ruffle cuff and separate button placket make Roseanne a true gem. Bring on the summer. Not a fan of that many ruffles? <laughs> then leave off the sleeve, ruffle sleeves and instead extend the sleeves to your preferred length. Okay, let's see what they mean by that. So... We've got, I think, a set-in sleeve. We've got some kind of like yoke detail with gathering and a button front. Ooh, we've got gathered sleeve and a little peplum. Oh, come on. Show us the top. All right, this is probably going to be the best we're going to get. But you can see this little yoke thing actually kind of comes down and becomes the waist seam in the back. There's only three buttons, very loose fitting. The sleeve here seems to be great in terms of the shoulder width seems to be fine. So if they're using the same block from that other pattern, then it probably is okay. Um, a little fussy through here, obviously, where the, here we go, where the um, placket intersects, but it's an interesting design for sure. I don't know that I would be super comfortable with it coming across the apex of my bust, but I also can't tell if this is falling to the back, um, which is what is causing this to be like high low. Like I think this is supposed to go under the, I don't know where it is supposed to go. Hold on. Let's see if we can find some more pictures. Nope. That one seems like it's way above, but I also can't see a shoulder seam. That one seems way above. This one seems... Oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I don't know that I like that. Let's, let me watch the video and see if I can see on there. Yeah, I guess here, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that just like my eye has caught that detail and now I can't unsee it? And it's really not that big of a deal? Oh, that's a really good picture of it. Okay, hold on. Because you can see, because she's pulling her hands back, so you, it's like tighter, so you can see where her apex is. Yeah, it's going to teeter around the center of your apex, maybe a little bit lower. I don't know that I love that. I mean, I guess it's easy enough to fix, but, or alter. Fix implies something's wrong. It's something's really wrong. It's just something I don't like. It's cute, though. Sure is cute. That's worth considering, Roseanne. Did we do all the other stuff? Thread, interfacing, buttons, and then not a ton of fabric at all, obviously. Hmm. All right. Just a couple more here. We've got the Surrey top. You can have this boxy bracelet sleeve top done in the blink of an eye. Yes, you could. All you need is the one large pattern piece. How cool is that? Oh, the inserts and the facing pieces. Okay, sorry. I thought we were going to end at one large pattern piece and that being it. That means quick and easy. The boat neck is super elegant and makes this the perfect top for combining with high-waisted skirts or trousers. Find the ideal length for your figure here, which that takes you to 
how to shorten and lengthen patterns. Okay, let's take a look at it. So there's going to be very few seams. Um, there's an inset of some kind, which I'll keep my eye out for, but you've just got facings. I love this boat neckline, um, but obviously it's a grown on sleeve, cropped, the uh, bracelet length they're calling it, seven eighths would be similar. This one, they rolled them up. I don't see any insets. Oh, these are the insets. That's interesting. So one pattern piece, but a front and a back that you cut from the fabric. I'm trying to see if this is a pleat detail. I don't know, the dot is hard to, <clears throat> hard to read. or if they just like intentionally folded things in a way that they would look better for the picture, but not natural for them to stay that kind of precise. I don't know. A line drawing would be really helpful. Um, okay, Surrey looks sweet in all kinds of fabrics. Knit and wovens will both work. Chambray, tinsel, linen, interlock, and French terry, just a few. You can choose a structured fabric or something with fluid drape, depending on the look you're going for. Fabrics with fluid drape, such as rayon crepe or rayon, won't stand out as much if you want more structure, considering making it in a poplin. You need thread, a little teensy bit of interfacing, and like one and three quarter yards of fabric, depending on your size, maybe even one and a quarter yards. No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So if you're a 2X or 3XL, you have to find 55 inch yard fabric because it won't fit because it's all one pattern piece. It's an interesting concept, it being one pattern piece. Um, that's for sure. And I mean, the way they have it styled is really cute. I just feel like this could go either way and if you don't have like the vision for how it will turn out, how you will style it, you could end up making something that looks like, I don't know, not cute. <laughs> um, this Deborah dress appears to be pretty similar to the top. Fancy a new easy peasy sewing project. The Deborah dress is just the ticket with its simple straight cut, no zips or buttons, and three quarter length sleeves. The jewel neck has a unique diagonal has unique diagonal side seams that conceal super handy pockets. I love that. The back has a line of discrete gathers and can either be made with a V-neck or matching jewel neck. Well, this doesn't seem that simple at all. All right, let me see if I can find out what, what they're talking about. And this to me is not a jewel neck. To me, this is a, this is a boat neck. A jewel neck would come up way higher on the shoulder. Okay, here is, well, wait, what did they say about the side seam? A unique diagonal side seam. What does that even mean? Diagonal how to the back Ooh, that's cute but of course like all the shadows are over here in the side seam where I'm trying to see what's going on okay here we go thank you for a useful picture I mean it's subtle but they're diagonal toward the front so this back is wider than the front is I think The pocket does seem to be well constructed. I think I see a little bit of top stitching here. And then this seems a little bit long. I don't know if it's supposed to be drop shoulder. They didn't mention that. This also seems to be a very large 
arm sigh. Um, again, I'm not sure if that's part of the design or what. I'm surprised to see that there's a set-in sleeve here. I thought it was a grown-on sleeve all this time. Just because it is so big. I mean, under the underarm alone, it just has so much fabric. It's cute, though. I really like it. It might need a little bit of work, but I really like it. Here it is with the... Um, what they're calling a jewel neckline. I don't know that I agree with that so much. Um, but I think because the neckline is so wide, this is falling down a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell with these pictures, but it is cute. There are so many fabrics that work well with the Deborah dress, both wovens and knit will work. Our suggestions, poplin, chambray, denim, French terry, or suede. Okay. Two stars difficulty. Thread, interfacing, that's all you need. No closures, no nothing. I do like that about a dress. It just pulls on. Um, and I guess if you were going to do the uh, V back, you could mimic that in the front. And then this is kind of what would hold it up onto your shoulder. Because, well, I don't know. This, this is kind of a drop shoulder, too. Maybe that's part of the design. I would just need to see the um, line drawings. And I don't know why they aren't part of... Maybe I'll go look at that... Um, the little... I'll show you. Um, but here are the fabric requirements. I mean, it jumps as you get to the larger sizes from 2.5 up to 4. So it's just because it is so boxy... That the larger, it's so boxy and has so much ease to it. So um, the larger sizes, you know, you can't lay the pattern pieces side by side. You have to really lay them all out. So um, it's cute though. And very, very pandemic trans transitional, which is a new term I'm coining, which is kind of where I'm at right now. And some of you might agree where you're like wanting to make something a little bit cute but you're not ready for it to be close fitting or fussy or like, you know what I mean? It's that middle, middle ground. Okay. Let's see here. Is it, this is not going to get big. Oh. Well, this is as big as this is going to get here. We'll do this and it'll be blurry, but, um, all right. So there's the elites with the big pleats. Um, Babette is the denim jean. This is the Deborah dress, the one that we just looked at. And it does not seem like that sleeve is supposed to, that shoulder is supposed to be dropped. So I would check that length of the shoulder for sure. Definitely check what's going on in the arm side in general. Maybe even just take an arm side that you know you really like and compare the two. I think you would see stark difference. Um, but remember, it's not supposed to be fitted. But it's also not supposed to be too big or, or, or oversized. Um, and then here is Mabel, cutie Mabel. Here is Marion with the eyelet. Remember the black eyelet? Super cute. There's Paulette, the cute button down. Roseanne, the one with like the weird cut across the bust apex. I, I, I really do think that these gathers are supposed to be like not under your bust like an empire waist but somewhere between the bust apex and the under bust. I think that's where these are supposed to go. So I do think that they are, it, this is pulling to the back and there are some adjustments that you can make to prevent that from happening. But it's certainly something. This goes from being like a super easy, cute little top to now you've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> all right. And then we've got Surrey. So you can see all one pattern piece. You cut one for the back, one for the front, and you're good to go with the little insets. And then we've got the, tra the flight suit, the 80s flight suit. And then the two kids. Cute collection. There are quite a few that I really, really like here. I do like Deborah. I like Maybell. I like Paulette. For sure. Roseanne is a strong contender as well. 
Oh, I forgot the Molly jacket earlier. So yeah, there are some really cute ones. I am dying to know what you guys think of this new collection. I have heard from you guys that um, a lot of you said that this was your favorite, if ever, um, or in a really long time. So yeah, just curious to know what your thoughts on the collection are. If you've seen it before and now you're looking at them with um, new, new perspective after hearing my interpretation, um, let me know that. Or if this is your first time looking at them like it is mine, let me know just your instinctive first impression thoughts. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to see what you guys think. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.